Welcome to Dino Overhaul X, the mod that literally changes the game so much it is a different experience entirely. I'm not going to waste any of your time explaining what the Dino Overhaul X mod does because I'm going to be learning just as much as you are throughout the movie, so make sure to stick around. Double check that you are subscribed and that you've liked the video, make sure to grab yourself a snack and a drink, and enjoy the show. The first day, I spawned in the northeast of the Highlands location. Apparently this Titan Queen thing arrived, whatever that means, I, I don't really know. Uh, apparently there's a bunch of things that honestly kind of sound scary arrive all the time. It's probably not a big deal though. So I started off with doing the beginner arc shenanigans by punching a dead tree and picking up stones. I then went to make my first pickaxe and then I made my first axe. With Dino Overhaul X, or in this case Docs, you can passive tame most creatures. With that being said, that means I can passive tame the turtles wandering around me. I just need to get higher levels. I made a reusable spear that I will probably be using a lot. Then I made a campfire and I also made a meat spoiler as well. I harvested I a beach whale for hide, the keratin, and the spoiled meat, and then I made a bola. I made two wood foundations to start my little camp. I placed the campfire in front of it and the meat spoil in the corner behind the camp, but not on any of the wood foundations. I was hungry, and my choices were to either find something to kill or find some carrots or potatoes. I was originally going out to find some carrots and or potatoes. I, like I said, I, honestly, either one was really okay with me, but I ended up finding a 790 Equus. So I bulleted it and killed it. When I got back to camp, a Dillo had spawned and was guarding the entrance to the beach. Luckily, I was able to get around the Dillo without any trouble. I got to the camp and started cooking some meat. While the meat was cooking, I made and placed a mortar and pestle. And I made my first, you won't believe this, you might actually want to sit down for how many I made. I actually, I made nine narcotics. I, I know it's really nothing special. I don't know why I put this in my notes, but it's whatever. I noticed that the Dillo was actually getting dangerously close, so I ran away. I saw a level 600 moss chops, but I gotta be level 55, of course. So I went to the next moss chops, and it was level 1075, and I need to be level 75. So I'm not close to either of those levels, so I'm gonna have to either level up or find something a little lower level. I didn't know if if I could actually bowler the Dillo and it was actually annoying me so I actually I want I went to find out but turns out you can't I still managed to kill it somehow the Dillo is actually pretty fast so it's really unfortunate you can't bullet it but I did manage to kill it it drops stuff stuff like metals a book pants and a metal pickaxe so that was pretty nice I don't know what the metals are going to do, they're like tungsten and titanium, but I put the pants on and equipped the pickaxe. Now that I have a metal pickaxe, I went to go get crystal, since I would actually get a decent return of crystal on the way back instead of a couple of crystal if I had used a stone pickaxe. And as I was leaving, another Dillo had appeared and was guarding the exit, so I snuck past it and ventured towards the crystal cave. I came out with 186 crystal, which is way more than I would have ever gotten with a stone pickaxe. With the crystal I had just gotten, I made my first awesome Spyglass. A wild Giga X was spotted as I was gathering carrots, so that's kind of terrifying. So, like, what does it mean by spotted? Like, did I see it or is it near? Is it a threat? Like, I have no idea what that means. So, uh, we'll, we'll probably find out later. So, th that'll be fun. After I gathered the carrots, I went back home. When I got home, I found two dodos, so I killed them. I also killed a Lymantria because I needed the chitin. After that, I became Raxray, and Hirochi also joined me. She is red and black with orange crystals for this movie. Then I went on to kill a Dilophosaurus. It took a while to hit it since it was swimming pretty fast, but eventually I did hit it. It started running, so I chased it over the hill. It almost nibbled my ankle, but right before I did, I managed to kill it, which was actually pretty epic. It was honestly like maybe a few inches away from me. After I killed it and harvested the Dillo's corpse, I found a green Equus. At first, I kind of assumed it might have been some sort of special Equus, but it turned out to be just a normal one. So now I snuck up behind it and used a carrot and tamed it. She looked like the color mint, so it was obvious to name her Minty. And yes, you're you're not gonna believe this honestly you're gonna want to sit down for this one too she does actually get berries it's crazy when i got home i made a whopping 268 narcotics which is actually a lot more than i ever thought i'd be able to make after that two pegos decided to chase me please have mercy please come on let's talk about this minty help me so i ran to minty and she saved me and afterwards i was kind of regretting killing them because i probably should have tried to tame them oh well doesn't really matter honestly it's whatever so i made three large stores by 
boxes, and a forge. With the forge, I started to cook metal so I could make metal tools and metal armor for the future. Later in the day, I was killing an Avis, and as the Avis died, Minty took a nap. So I harvested the Avis, and a few moments later, Minty woke up. When I got home, I made a smithy, and with the smithy, I made a metal hatchet. Then I made a Lakota bow and Lakota arrows. The Lakota arrows is from the Realistic Ballistics mod, and they actually do damage and bleed, which is pretty cool. And not only do they do bleed, but the bleed stacks, so it'll go to 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, I think. So it's actually pretty cool. And I killed one of the Icky Thornus bird with the bow. I've realized that the majority of you guys that watch my content actually watch it from a TV. So today I went out and purchased my very own TV so I can demonstrate to you guys how to subscribe to anyone, just in case you guys didn't know. Just go up and then locate the channel icon, click on it, and then you can find subscribe. Go ahead and click on that. You can also turn on notifications if you want to, but you don't have to. Thank you for subscribing and enjoy the rest of the video. I was told that trikes were one of the best starter games in Doc, so I went out to look for one on day 2. I found a cyan one at level 475, but I was not high enough level to tame it. So I found a level 360 trike, and I started a passive tame it. Ended up taking two berries, and it took a while, but it was definitely easier than knocking it out. When she tamed up, I named her Sarah. Sarah is a name from uh, Land Before Time, one of this like old cartoons, like that little, I think it was orange triceratops, little baby triceratops, I don't know. It was just a show, movies, a bunch of movies I used to watch back then. Comment down below if you ever watched Land Before Time. I then made a saddle for Sarah, and she's pretty slow, but she does eventually pick up speed, even though her max speed isn't really fast. It's it's kind of annoying. It's like a it's like a dire bear kind of movement. It's honestly I think it's really stupid. She can gather stone, corpses, and of course bushes. I didn't know what much to do other than that I knew I needed to level up, so I killed an apex turtle. The apex turtle dropped rainbow poop, whatever that is, like I guess it's just some sort of fertilizer, a chitin chest plate, which will come in handy because I'll be wearing it, some metabolism darts for a, I think it was like a dock super rifle, which I don't have one of those, and I don't know what a metabolism dart's gonna do, so who knows. I also got some explosive spears and some metal, which I still don't know what they're for. On day three, I saw a baby dodo, and I needed to be level 45 to tame it, so I said no and killed it. It's a baby dodo. Level 45? Nah. I stole the egg from a Gallimimus, or more, took the egg because it kind of neglected it and abandoned it, but of course the Gallimimus got mad, so I had to kill the Gallimimus. I had a level 1000 Pegomastex chase me, and I wasn't sure if I could tame it, but I let it steal my Medra Berries to try and tame it. I actually managed to tame it, and I was actually surprised because I thought like, oh, you had to be a level 75 or something, you tamed it, but uh, I, I guess not, so I guess I have a level 1000 Pego now. Of course, I named it SA from the old Pego that died in the uh, zombie 100 days. What a legend. What an absolute legend SA was. I was running down the beach and actually ran into some aloes ahead, so I attempted to to turn around. One of the aloes was chasing a galley, and the galley was running my way, and it could have gotten us killed, but luckily the aloe didn't notice us and we got away safely. After that, I tamed a level 180 Tyranodon, and I named her Dawn, and even made her a saddle. And who would have thought that it would have been two weeks to carry me? So I managed to make myself lighter, and did actually manage to ride Dawn, but the riding in this mod is so stupid feeling, to be honest. So I'll just use Minty for now. I tamed a level 100 Bronto that was super pink, so I named it Pinky. I saw three aloes in the distance and thought maybe the Bronto could take them. So I whistled the Bronto on the three aloes and uh, Pinky got shredded. So, um, sorry Pinky. F's in the comments for Pinky. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! So, note to self, aloes are definitely still powerful in this mod. So, that's good to know. When I was running home, I nearly ran into another pack of aloes. I needed to find dillos and raptors to kill, so on day 4, I went out to look for some. I managed to kill two dillos, but they didn't give anything. I think I need to actually kill apexes for good loot, but I was just told that dillos and raptors actually will drop good loot, so... I, I don't really know, so I guess I'll look for apexes and also the normal ones. I came across an alpha megalania, and of course this thing was insanely fast, after I had attacked it. So it killed Minty and then me. I'm sorry Minty. And it literally just healed? Bruh, there's no escaping this, okay. Man, oh, it's so dumb. Why was it so fast? 
When I respawned, I expanded the base by two more foundations and then added three beds. So I actually had a place to respawn when I did. Then I found a level 900 Equus, so I tamed it. I didn't think I would be able to since like I was expecting it to be like, oh, you had to be level 75, something like that. So uh, that's what I was expecting, but I was obviously able to tame it. So that's pretty cool. I named her Zeb Striker, even though she looks nothing like a Zeb Striker, but that's whatever. After that, I finally tamed that Cyan, Trike, finally. And I named him Syntac because the color Cyan reminds me of Syntac. Uh, th that's, that's really, that's all I had to say, yeah. On day five, I harvested a bunch of stone with my buddy old pal, Syntac. I plan on making a decent sized stone house, so I'ma get as much stone as possible. Then I bred myself a trike egg because I wanted another trike, but I also wanted it to be imprinted. This way, it'll be an imprinted trike and it'll probably, hopefully, be a little bit more powerful than my two current trikes. When I hatched the trike, it was another cyan trike and I named the baby Cyanide. I imprinted Cyanide with one Tinto Berry and then the phone auto-corrected Tinto Berries to Ty Roberts originally. I don't know, it's pretty stupid. I don't even know why I wrote that. On day six, I expanded the base by two more foundations. After that, I made an upgrade station. Then I used that upgrade station to upgrade a trike saddle to 23.2 armor, which is Mastercraft. It's not really great, but it's better than six, I guess. Cyanide eventually grew up on the morning of day six, by the way. I, I didn't mention that it grew up. I just mentioned that uh, I guess it did eventually grow up. I, I guess I wasn't really paying attention, honestly. It just it grew up, okay. Then I took the trike trio out on a hunt. I killed a Diplo, and the Diplo actually put up a decent fight. The Diplo kept stunning us or something that would make us really slow, so it did take a while, but we did eventually kill it. Then I found a level 420 Bronto, and I tamed her with two Medjo Berries. I ended up naming her Sally. I left her on neutral and just continued to hunt with the trike trio. I didn't feel like having her follow us, so I was just going to leave her there, and we'd come back. I was in the plains where spiders and other creepy crawlies spawn, and there is a prime phoenix flying nearby in the horizon so i gotta be really careful out here i had a fight with a mantis and this mantis was nearly level 1000 i ended up losing sarah so that was pretty upsetting no don't die sarah no don't you just run away you will pay for what you've done get him syntax man now we're not mate boosted anymore this means i'm probably gonna have to get another female trike if i ever want to breed again and apparently bags in this game have like a flashing light so like maybe you can find them easier it's pretty neat, I'd say. Also, if you didn't notice, the mantis actually hurt a lot, so that's actually pretty crazy. I thought snakes and spiders were supposed to give you loot, but I killed, honestly, a couple of snakes and one spider, and maybe I'm thinking of apexes, so I guess I gotta look for apex snakes and spiders. When I was heading home on day seven, I whistled Sally to follow us, and when I got to camp, I used the upgrade station to upgrade both of my metal tools to Ascendant. On day eight, I ventured out to get wood, and in the process, I found an apex pteranodon. First two shots somehow missed. I don't even know how. Like, honestly, they had to have just gone right through his head. There's, like, l I'm literally not that bad, okay? After I tamed it, I named it Dodo Evolved. Honestly, I think it's a pretty stupid name, but it's whatever. It could haunt me for a few days, but it's whatever. Anyways, the Apex Pteranodon is actually really big, so it's a decently good tame, I suppose. I don't know. It's it's better than a normal Pteranodon, but it like it's got better weight, but it's still so slow, dude. It's like Quetzal speed, for real. On days 9 and 10, I built the house. I didn't want to waste any of my future time. I just wanted to get the house done so I could just move in and just get everything settled and... It's a decent looking house. It's not really one of my best looking houses, but I mean, it's a cool house. So yeah, I built it. On day 11, I logged into the world and my graphic settings were reset. I didn't record this and I didn't take any pictures of it, but just believe me, it was annoying to fix. So now I have to keep a screenshot of my settings. Thanks, Ark. I would suggest you also take a picture of your settings just in case. I, I think it's honestly going to be good for the future because who knows when this is going to happen. I think it's really stupid that the game can reset your settings, but whatever. Anyways, I moved everything from the camp to the house and it took way longer than I thought it would but after it was all finished and moved I made a soul gun and some soul balls I then moved every dino either into soul balls or into the new house's yard in this case I moved every dino into a soul ball except for cyanide on days 12 and 13 I built a greenhouse this also took longer than expected because I was hoping to get it done and built on day 12 but it was finally finished on day 13 and now that it's finished I need to go get a dung beetle so I can start making fertilizer I found a level 490 dung beetle and I tamed it I'm still 
still gonna wait until I'm a high enough level to make a soul terminal because producing fertilizer is way faster that way if you have a dung beetle and a lot of dinosaurs in the soul terminal. After that, I made a fabricator. On day 14, I brought water to the greenhouse. This consisted of just a big long pipe uh, as usual and it just went down to the beach. Weirdly enough, it actually let me plug the intake right into the sand. So I don't know how I'm getting water from that, but I am not complaining. Then I worked on bringing power and light to the house by getting a generator and placing a few lamps here and there in the house so it's no longer pitch black at night. I spent day 15 working on leveling up, although ironically I say this now because I had originally hoped this was the plan, but I did not level up at all. What actually happened is I traveled to Vikings Bay to kill a bunch of Apexes like Apex Dillos and Dodos to get a bunch of their loot like tungsten and titanium. So I guess I spent most of the day killing Apexes is what I'm trying to say because I did not get any levels. But before I did go out, I just wanted to upgrade both of my crossbows. So I got them to 411 and 368% ascendant. So that's pretty nice. While I was at it, I also made and upgraded a full set of flak armor. I got them to journeyman and apprentice for a total of 512 armor. It's worse than normal flak, but that's the mod making the armor super weak, so I don't really know what to tell you. It's still better than if it was normal flak in dock, so. So technically, it's not better than normal flak in vanilla, because that would be a total of 500 armor because each flak piece is 100 armor, but in docks, it's just way weaker, so I don't really know why. I killed my first Apex Dillo, and I got some pretty cool loot. After that, I had a super scary encounter with a Rex. I was about to kill it, and somehow I had found a spot where it couldn't actually hit me, but Genius here moved out of that spot, so it ended up killing me. Ooh, so scary. All oh, super scary. Hey, 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 chill, chill. You got on the damn rock, bro. Ah! Fine, you wanna go, boy? Wait, wait, come on. No way, dude. no way, dude. Hit me, thank you. Okay, okay, wait, I'm going back over here. I'm going back. Hey, no, no, bad. Oh, man, that's so stupid. He couldn't hit me and then he did. That's dumb. I respawned near the same Viking bear area because there was absolutely no point of spawning at home because I would just have to travel all the way back because I still needed to kill some more Apex. The second Apex Dillo I killed, I got a blueprint for a dog superior bow. So that's actually pretty cool. I need the bow to actually use some of the arrows and now I have it. I don't know how important the bow is going to be now that I'm kind of, you know, like level 66 and I've got these super powerful crossbows and all that, but I'll see what they do. Then I killed an Apex Dodo and I also got some pretty good loot from that. Then I found this Apex Dillo and it was attacking some Brontos. Little did it know that the Brontos were actually pretty strong and the Apex Dillo got murked. So I went to the corpse of the Dillo and I found a Mastercraft Superior X bow, which was pretty cool. And then I encountered a super fast Mega OP Megalosaurus and it killed me like literally instantly it didn't even give me mercy oh, holy moly dude why are you so fast dude help me help me herbivore please dude what the hell that thing was so fast i hope they kill it so i respawned and went back down the beach and i actually found two bags and it was an apex saber tooth and an apex dillo bag so that means something else killed these apexes and i just got the loot which is honestly awesome I got a journeyman long neck rifle from the Apex Sabertooth bag and some more bows from the Apex Dillo bag. Then I got mauled by Aloes. At the end of the day, I had gotten some pretty decent loot. Like I said earlier, I didn't get any levels. I started out at level 66, and when I came back, I was level 66. Even though I killed a bunch of Apexes and all that, I got nothing. I didn't need most of the stuff I got, so I just grinded them down in the upgrade station. I wasn't sure if you could grind down the books, but I had to try, and it turns out you can't. I don't think they really give you a lot of loot, but... It's one way to get rid of them, so that's cool. So I don't know how actually useful the Superior X bow is going to be to me, and I was actually planning on upgrading the Long Neck Rifle and the Superior bow, but turns out I can't upgrade either. Couldn't afford to upgrade the rifle, and apparently the bow needs silk, so I guess I'm not upgrading either of them. And here's the most annoying part of the day, is that at the end of the day, to make the docks crafting station, I needed one more tungsten. So this means on day 16, I'm going to go get one more. This is literally so stupid. What isn't stupid is today's sponsor, Custom Lux PCs. Custom Lux PCs make wonderful PCs. I know because they made my current rig. Their build times are quicker, their prices are way better, and their customer service is top notch. I have two links in the description for you. The first one is a link to my three handcrafted PCs, Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. All three PCs are capable of playing ARC and will crush the competition in pricing. And if you don't like my three PCs, 
then that's okay too, because the second link is where you can contact Custom Lux PCs for a free quote on a custom built PC. Just go ahead and tell them your budget and any other specifications you want in your PC. They will work with you and your budget with excellent customer service. When you decide on either purchasing one of my three PCs or if you want to make your own, definitely go ahead and use code RAXRIGHT for an additional 5% off. That is free money, my friends. Thank you, Custom Lux PCs, for sponsoring today's video. On day 16, I went out to kill some more apexes for that one piece of tungsten that I needed since I didn't get that earlier. So I found one apex dillo, I killed it, and I got everything that I needed, so I was set. Then I actually found Littlefoot, the little Bronto long neck looking dinosaur from Land Before Time. I mentioned the movies earlier, but yeah, honestly, it's pretty cute. When I got home, I made a dog's crafting station since I had gotten that one piece of tungsten that I had needed. I don't know what anything is in the crafting station other than a couple of things, but I guess I'm up for learning, right? On day 17, I had made three advanced poison grenades. These are one of the things that I know, and they're actually pretty decent at knocking stuff out for the most part, especially if it's like a passive dinosaur. You can just kind of like go up next to it and just kind of toss it in, and it won't make them aggroed at you. They won't make them upset. It won't do anything like that, so it's actually pretty useful. On day 18, I used the three advanced poison grenades to tame a pack of aloes. I used the poison grenades to my advantage, and I just threw them down in the ravine where the aloes were. The poison grenades had worked as I'd planned, they went down, they opened up, right, and they had the gas come out, and uh, they made them go night-night, so everything worked out in my favor, and then I went down, obviously I fed them, and then it took a while to tame them, I had to put some narcotics in their inventory, except for the level 500, that one tamed up almost instantly, which is kind of weird, but it's whatever. So anyways, I tamed all three, I put them in soul balls, and then I found a level 1000 trike further into the ravine, so I knocked it out and tamed it as well. When I got home, I started breeding the level 800 and level 1000 out. Hello. I named the level 1000 trike Penetrator. I took the saddle from Cyanide and gave it to Penetrator. I made an awesome teleporter and it's remote so I can now teleport home with ease and I placed the teleporter pad right outside my base. On day 19, I placed two air conditioners so I could easily hatch all the eggs I would ever get. I got five perfect females and one perfect male to start breeding them. It's not really necessary to breed all these aloes. In fact, it honestly might be a waste of time. I just wanted to get a little bit of a couple of highly mutated ones, maybe just a couple of mutated ones. I, I don't really know what I was planning. All I knew is that I had some high level aloes that I wanted to make sure I would never lose. So this way I can always breed myself another aloe if it dies. At the end of the day, on day 20, I had around 60 eggs to see if I could get any mutations. And what's really stupid is that I got 5 mutations out of the 60 and three of them had trash mutations, and the two males had mutations in health, which I wasn't really upset about necessarily, but I honestly kind of wanted a melee mutation, but it's whatever, at least they weren't trash mutations. So like I said earlier, I, yeah, it kind of was a waste of time. I think both of the males actually look pretty cool. I tossed both of them out to see which one would look cooler, but honestly, they both look pretty cool. So I'll keep them both and then have two more females for the pack to be complete. I then threw out the rest of the baby aloes so I can later unclaim them and then let my pack slaughter them and gain levels. I named the blue and white aloe culvers and then I named the orange one cheese ball. And then I named the two females fork and spoon. Don't, don't get any ideas from that, okay? It was totally reasonable. On day 21, my aloe pack had finally grown up and turns out they're actually pretty fast. All of the aloes that I let out earlier, I had unclaimed all of them after every single one of them had grown up and then I used my aloe pack to kill all of them. This took all day, but honestly, I think it was kind of worth it because Culver's had 54 levels and their others had anywhere between 41 and 45 levels. I got Culver's to 7k health and put the rest into melee. Then I got cheese ball, fork, and spoon to 7k health and then put the rest of their levels into melee as well. On day 22, I went on a hunting trip with the aloe pack and I realized I had 13 levels probably from killing all the aloes would be my guess the max damage i was seeing from culver's was 831 while i was taking a little bit of a break to get culver's stamina back up i got jumped by a prime phoenix the prime phoenix killed culver's and me i managed to save the other three but rest in peace culver's when i went down to the beach i saw sa was still alive and i tried to save him but i unfortunately failed so i was pretty upset so i took my anger out on a lot of other megalanes i killed maybe a hundred honestly it would be my guess either 50 or 100, I don't know, somewhere around that number. And after that, I attacked a lava golem, and it only had 2.1k health. It couldn't have been that strong, right? Oh no, oh no. I got you, Gordon. Sorry, Spoon. <laughs> oh, dang. He passed. Oh, bro. Why is he so quick? Okay, we, we evaded. That was scary.
Oh, he's still coming though. Okay, I think now we escaped. That was scary, dude. Okay, note to self, don't attack a lava golem. Yeah, sorry, Spoon. So now we've only got cheese ball and fork left. On day 23, I was hunting some penguins because they were way too overpopulated. Then I kind of felt like I bonded with this green RG because I felt like we were kind of like hunting these penguins together. So I knocked it out and tamed it. After I was done eliminating some penguins, I had a total of 2,099 organic polymer. Later in the day, I found a red drop. It had an ascendant thorny dragon saddle, an ascendant basilo saddle, and a wind turbine. Then a bunch of other blueprints I'll probably never craft. I was trying to tame a really cool apex RG, but an apex pithecus, stupid name by the way, decided to crash the party. I got back to my corpse and nearly escaped the big monkey again, but I had failed. Monkey, monkey no. Monkey! Oh, monkey! Monkey, leave me alone! Oh. <laughs> I knocked out that RG I wanted to tame. The one that looked super cool. But of course the monkey crashed the party again. So I led the monkey off a cliff. I found a wyvern nest that looked to be unguarded. Apparently there was a wyvern guardian. I just didn't see it at first. And apparently you have to be level 127 to pick up the egg. Like that's... That's... Okay, that's, that's stupid, okay? Dumb. Dumb. Stupid. You can't hit me. Loser. I'm gonna go away now. Stupid. La 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 la. <laughs> On day 24, I placed the wind turbine because it looks pretty cool. I then took out the green RG I tamed earlier. I named him Slime because, well, he's green. I then gave him a saddle and then took him out for a test drive. Flying in this mod is super weird. I, I don't know what's wrong with it, it just it feels weird, alright? That's that's all I'm gonna say. It just feels weird. After 6 levels into movement speed, he is much more agile. He does 137 damage to start, so it's, it's not terrible, but like, it, it's not great either. I went to the desert and was about to attempt to tame an Apex RG when all of a sudden a prime dimorphodon came to kill me why are you nuking me okay we chill no we're not we're not chill stop nuking me man you're missing anyways your aim sucks you're bad you're so bad dude you're literally trash you're trash you're trash you suck at this game i'm going home never mind when i came back the dimorphodon was gone get him slime Ooh, we're getting clapped by a dire wolf oh he got clapped i got you buddy i'll avenge you he came back bro he snuck up on us i'm sorry slime damn you did not deserve that my dude rude dire wolf that was mean that was rude horrendously rude so i knocked out and tamed the apex rg the melee on the rg is unfortunately pretty trash i ended up naming her topaz she does around 177 damage which is kind of meh and after a few levels she does 403 which is pretty pretty good it's it's better on day 25 i noticed that topaz has a paragon level it's like a two in parentheses next to the apex argent savers i didn't know what this meant so i took a look in the book and i couldn't find anything about it so i googled it and i still couldn't find anything so that's great later in the day i killed an apex titanoboa because i need to get one of those guns that are like the super gun or whatever i don't really know i just need to get one okay on the first apex titanoboa i killed i got a giga saddle a cool chitin chest plate and an organic poison rifle thingy and eventually i've heard of the organic poison rifle things they kind of like slow creatures down and do torpor it's actually pretty cool the second apex titanoboa i killed i didn't get anything so i just went back home and called it a day i do however plan on coming back in a later day maybe with like a better creature and i'm gonna kill some more snakes on day 26 i made a docks forge because from what i've heard they're actually pretty fast and well i found out that they are literally really fast they make like 15 metal every five or so seconds so i retired the old two forges since this one is so quick since i'm finally high enough level to make soul terminals i made two of them one so i can have the dung beetle in and so i can start making fertilizer and the other so i can store babies as they hatch now I need to start breeding apex dillos so I can use their fertilized eggs and recipes. So at the end of day 26, I tamed a female dillo. On the morning of day 27, I knocked out an apex dillo. Then I killed his brother. I then tamed the apex dillo. Now I have a breeding pair of dillos. I didn't name it this, but for whatever reason, the male dillo's name is enslaved bracket name me. So that's weird anyways i started breeding the two dillos and didn't even change the name because i thought it was funny i then went out to collect more metal since the forge smelts metal so quickly on day 28 i hatched the leftover aloe eggs and killed the babies with topaz and got 65 levels I of course put them all in the melee. 
Turns out I also got 16 levels, which is pretty cool. I opened a purple drop and got a long neck rifle with 472% melee, which is honestly kind of insane. I went searching in the wyvern trench and it was empty. No wyverns, no eggs. So I went to the underground area. And well, it was the same thing. No wyverns, no eggs. So I killed an apex lightning wyvern and I found its nest. And of course you can't take the egg because there's another parent around. So I don't know. Live me explains the situation pretty well. So I'll let him speak. That's so stupid. I literally kill- oh, oh, you can't pick up this fertilized egg until you kill every parent. Like, that's gonna stop me from grabbing their child? Okay, game. Okay. If that's the game you want to play, then we can play that game, you lousy little child. So, with that being said, with Topaz being dead and all, I need to tame another RG. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and tame a male and female so I can start breeding the birds. On day 29, I started breeding the ape. Apex Argies I had tamed earlier. While they were breeding, I upgraded my sickle so I could get more fiber. I then upgraded my flak armor to Ascendant. I let the Argies breed most of day 29 so I could just get enough eggs, and honestly, they take forever to breed. I need 5 females and 1 male, and honestly, it's gonna take forever. I let the Argies breed for all of day 30 because I need to get 5 perfect females. Like I said earlier, I need 6 eggs. and it literally took all of day 30 just to get the 6 eggs I needed. On day 31, I had finally gotten all the eggs I needed. It literally took forever. I hatched the RG eggs and I got 4 perfect females and 2 females with 5 mutations? It's honestly kind of weird. One has 5 mutations in health, which is good, and the other has 5 mutations in oxygen, which is pretty trash. The RG with 5 health mutations, I'm gonna be keeping. So now I've just got 5 breeding RGs instead of 6, but that's fine. Only need like 1 baby because like apparently Apex babies, uh, according to the book of course, have increased imprint quality so hopefully a bred bird should be pretty decent. I named the baby RG with the 5 health mutations Ruby. Then all the RGs grew up and since I have Ruby, I didn't think about breeding the RGs yet. But I definitely will have the RGs in the future if I ever lose Ruby. I went to test Ruby out and she's already pretty fast and has actually really good melee to start off. I killed a turtle and got 13 levels. When you pump levels into health it does literally nothing, almost like it were a giga, so I put them all into speed. I killed a bronto with Ruby and got 27 levels, so I put them all into melee. Now she's doing 614 damage. Honestly, not bad. Now to upgrade her saddle. Since the saddles and docks are pretty weak, I'm gonna go to the upgrade station and upgrade it. I managed to get the saddle armor to 26.9. I made a new upgrade station with like the crystal electronics and stuff like that to see if maybe I could go a little bit farther than just like one ascendant tier, like maybe a little bit better, right? But I couldn't. Well, anyways, it's a better saddle. It went from 6 to 26.9, so it's definitely an improvement. On day 32, I killed an apex lightning wyvern using the tactic I used for the first one I killed. Just ride behind the beast and don't let a zap ya. Pretty easy, right? And apparently there's like a max speed level. Like, it reset my levels, but I mean, I was able to get them back, I think. I, I don't really know. I don't know what I lost, but apparently you can't go past 375% movement speed, which is kind of weird. I stole the egg that I've been fighting for for like a couple days now, and a wyvern snuck up on me. Ruby had died, and it was right next to the spot where Topaz died because I was looking and I was about to get into their bags to see what I could get from them. Let's go. Screw you, Wyvern. I took your baby. <gasps> what did you come from? Really? Well, at least I stole your egg, you stupid little rat. But at least I got the egg, so that's what really matters. I got two saddles from the Wyvern I killed. Don't think I'll ever use them, so I grinded them down. I got tungsten and titanium ingots. Pretty neat. I didn't think that could happen. I started breeding the RG since Ruby died, and I hatched the Apex Wyvern. The Wyvern honestly looks kind of boring but I named her Electron. I took her on a walk to get her imprinted, and unfortunately her melee is pretty trash. I can't believe I traded two Apex birds for this. Honestly, this better be worth it. While she was growing, I tended to the garden by giving it fertilizer and planting the seeds. I hatched the Argies, and turns out that you do actually get 5 levels every mutation. I'm guessing this is because maybe they're Apexes or something? I don't really know. They weren't good levels, so I killed them. Halfway through day 33, an Electron is fully grown up. Just for me not to be able to ride her, because I need to feed her this Prime Kibble. 
great. I hatched a new baby RG and named him Thorn. I gave him an upgraded saddle and then I hatched a bunch of babies and killed them. This ended up with 149 levels. So I put 19 into movement speed to get my max movement speed and then 130 into melee. Thorn does 947 damage. That's honestly kind of insane. I got revenge on that wyvern that snuck up on me and picked up the bags after I double checked for sneaky wyverns. I was not going to let them sneak up on Thorn because this would be the third bird I lost and I was not going to let it happen. Then I killed an apex poison wyvern and then I killed an apex fire wyvern and honestly the fire wyvern battle was honestly pretty close. I'm honestly getting pretty good at killing these wyverns. It's literally pretty simple. You just ride behind them and don't get hit. That's that's all there is to it. On day 34 I realized I need fertilized apex dodo eggs for the pygmy trees. So I went out and tamed a male and female apex dodo. When I got home I started breeding the dodos. In order to get the prime kibble I need to kill some primes and I've heard that prime compies are the way to do it. They are pretty weak when it comes to a prime. So honestly, I thought it would be a lot harder killing this prime copy, but honestly, it was pretty easy. So I didn't get the kibble I needed, but I did get some good loot. I got this pretty cool looking shotgun, so I made some shotgun shells for it. I also made some sniper shells for the sniper rifle as well, but apparently I can't use it because I need exploding bullets. It's pretty stupid. I tested out the shotgun on a trike. It's not super OP, but it's, it's basically just a full auto shotgun, so it's honestly pretty cool. I like it. I made four of the taming treat things for pygmies. And when I killed the prime compy, I got this thing called a pygmy summoning artifact. I don't know what it does, so I used it. And in case it was bad, I didn't use it near my base. And it literally gave me a pygmy, which is literally awesome. It means I don't have to tame my own now. I got a dodic pygmy, which gives you and your tames defense. In this case, it gives you about 15% defense. I took a minute to read about pygmies again because I need to get caught up about how to evolve them and what they do. On day 35, I successfully evolved the dodic pygmy after failing once. So now it's an apex dodic pygmy and we get 30 defense, which is pretty cool. I need 25 of the prime meat things to evolve it into a prime dodic, so that's future me's problem. I was curious what a Giga X was since I keep popping on my screen like, oh, this one was spotted. So I went out to look for one and I tried to knock it out. It was pretty easy to knock out, but I couldn't see what I could use to tame it. So I just ended up killing it. I killed an Apex Ice Wyvern and I noticed its bag was in the sky. So with this knowledge, it's kind of clicked to me that I left a lot of bags after killing the Wyverns I killed. I kind of just assumed that I just didn't get loot from them, but this actually explains a lot now. So I went back to look for the bags, but in case they weren't there, I didn't look too hard. I then killed three more Apex Wyverns, and then I killed another Prime Compy and got that Prime Kibble I needed. Yes, I got Prime Kibble, let's go. This is game changing because now I can actually finally ride Electron. Although I did think about it a little bit, I might go ahead and try to find another egg to see if maybe I can just get a little bit of a better, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's kind of like maybe it, I, I, I just don't want it to be a waste, you know? So I might go out and look for another egg first because Electron's melee isn't really that great. At the end of the day, I looked at the good loot I had gotten and honestly, I had a ton of stuff. I got a nice Dox Poison Pistol which goes with the poison pistol bullets that I crafted days ago thinking I could use them in a normal pistol. Days 36 to 40 was kind of a doozy because none of it was actually recorded. OBS said it was recording my screen and I even had the picture over on my left monitor. But when I finished recording, I opened up the file and it's just a black screen for two hours. So everything that happened in those two hours is a black screen with audio. So there's a lot of things that happened that I don't have footage of. For example, I killed many, many wyverns and then I crashed, so I had to kill many, many wyverns again while stealing three eggs I never used. I bred up 10 RGs to go ahead and try to steal an apex prime egg. I managed to get the mother away from the nest and I actually took the egg and turns out that egg wasn't even a prime egg. It was just an apex ice wyvern egg. It was still a really good level and I named him Frostbite, but it wasn't a prime. I killed a couple couple prime compies, got a couple good stacks of loot from that. I even tamed a dodo rex, an apex dodo rex. I mean, he died, but I tamed one. So, I mean, you know, I, at least I had one, but you know, 
I don't know. It's just, it's really frustrating why OBS does stuff like this because like I said, it said it was recording. It had the screen, so I was, it was basically mirroring my main monitor, right? So it does what it usually does and it's just a black screen. It's stupid. It's dumb. And honestly, this is probably one of the most engaging two hours I've actually recorded because there's a lot of stuff that just kind of happened, you know? Yeah, that's what happened on days 36 to days 40, but here's the rest of the video. So since the last five days weren't really recorded, let me catch you up on what you missed. I got a summoning thing for this guy, so that's why I have an Apex Cinema Crops. His name is Buddy. Luckily, I still have Thorn. He's still alive. But now I've also got Frostbite. He is an Apex Ice Wyvern. He's pretty good. This is the squad of birds that helped me steal this egg that is actually now Frostbite. It was originally a prime egg, but it turned out to just be an Apex egg, which is weird. I made a fireplace, so... You know, that's cool. They're hot. I got these pants things. They're pretty cool. They got really good durability, pretty good armor, and pretty nice buff. 50% increased carry weight. And this is the stuff I currently have. I have another prime kibble from killing a prime compi, and I've got a good amount of meat. I just still need six more so I can evolve that dodic over here. I still need to get some of those, uh, the raw prime meats, whatever they are, like they're four different or five different, I don't, I don't really know. Anyways, I just know that, like, bigger carnivores will actually drop them, so like wyverns, rexes, gigas, stuff like that, so I went out to kill some apex rexes. I actually ended up with some decent loot. Some of that loot being these advanced long neck rifles I needed, and some other goodies I'll use in the future. On day 42, I had a really rough battle with two Apex Manticore Xs. Frostbite got honestly pretty close to dying, but luckily he did survive so he's not dead yet. And I also managed to snatch their 1225 Apex Manticore X A, which is pretty cool. I evolved the Dodic Pygmy into a Prime Dodic, and it's basically now a rideable creature. I then hatched the Apex Manticore X, and uh, she's super bright green. She's kind of like cool looking, but like kind of ugly at the same time. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. It's like the colors don't really go together, so uh, I don't know. She wanted Holy Prime Meat, but I, I guess it just wanted that in order to be imprinted, so... I don't know why it makes it kind of seem like, oh, the world's gonna end if you don't give him prime me or something, I don't know. It's whatever, but I imprinted her and it's fine. Speaking of her, I named her Uranium. And apparently I actually have a saddle for the Dodic that unlocks its powerful X attack. And I named the Dodic Granite, since I technically already named it Granite when it was like a pygmy, but it's whatever. I leveled up Granite by killing some babies. The X attack does like almost 23,000 damage. And I can't harvest corpses, so that's kind of like a downside, but it only has 13,000 health too, but it, it also has defense, like, I, I don't really know how well this thing's gonna do. 13,000 health honestly does not seem like that much, even if you have 40% defense. On day 43, I noticed in the dock's construction bench that there's actually an industrial mining ford, so I made one. I placed it down near the windmill, and we'll see how much it makes in a few days. I had armor for uranium, but in order to unlock the X attack, I need to get enhanced Apex armor. So the only way I thought I'd be able to get it was by killing some prime compies. Later in the day, I saw an Apex strike, and it wasn't a prime one, and I thought I would actually be able to kill it and find its egg. I was on frostbite, and my frost breath never touched the dragon, but of course, all of its breath touched me. So I ran away and eventually got on granite. I tried to use the X attack that, if you remember, does like 23,000 damage, but of course it just couldn't reach the stupid dragon, so of course Granite died. So dumb, dude. That's literally rigged. Bro, dragons got reach, dude. I'm sick of it. Dragons have some sort of hack, like... Actually, it's ridiculous, and the even more stupid part is that when I get my own dragon, it's not going to be that strong. Day 44. Well, even though I died and got granite killed, I still got a decent amount of loot. I didn't get an enhanced manticore saddle, unfortunately, but this is the loot I did get. Then I summoned my drones. I got two R2-D2s, apparently, because that's legal, and then I got this other floating drone thing. I, I don't know what they do. And then I summoned a pretty powerful enforcer. 
uh, well, at least it seemed powerful. I hatched baby Argies and then killed them with the Enforcer. I got him to around 40,000 health and then put the rest into melee. I named the Enforcer Terminator. On day 45, I killed an Apex Pithecus, still a stupid name, with Terminator. And then I was flying through the air in the swamp area with uranium and this prime leech just summoned a bunch of leeches to rain from the sky and it killed uranium. So that's, that's great. I never even got to experience the X attack. This game's stupid, bro. On day 46, I tamed an Argentavis pygmy. It took six failed attempts until it finally evolved into an apex pygmy. Then I used 25 raw docks prime meat to evolve the apex pygmy into an apex prime. But before I did that, I went to the docks crafting station and I made 29 more pygmy treats. When I spawned the Apex Prime, I got a unique Prime RG, which I didn't know what it was, but I read the book a little bit. Apparently, it's like a more powerful RG or something like it's more. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know, but it looks powerful. So I'd say it's that I named the Prime RG Freedom to start. It does 1.9K damage and it also has minions and they're pretty powerful. On day 47, I killed a bunch of baby RGs with freedom and got 151 levels. I got him to 50k health and got his movement speed to max. I then put the rest of the levels, 120 to be exact, into melee. I was trying to make my minions kill an Apex Prime Wyvern, but they were just as fast as it was, so they couldn't catch up. But when they did, they aggroed the Wyvern and then they despawned. That's when the Wyvern threw a fireball at me and Freedom. Freedom and I were not even close to the Wyvern and weren't even in the conflict, but this fireball had a mind of its own and went straight to us, so Freedom and I both died instantly. Literally so stupid. Just watch the clip. Yes, get him. Get him, boys. Oh, come on. They all despawned right at- <gasps> Oh! What? No. Are you joking? That's ridiculous. This game is so dumb, dude. I spent the rest of day 47 mourning Freedom. On day 48, I wanted another pygmy, so I went out to find a Kong pygmy, and I got killed by an Apex King Kong Vanguard dude, which is weird, so that's nice. So when I came back, I waited in the sky until the pygmy tamed up. I wasn't seeing failure or tamed, so I thought that maybe the pygmy ate every treat for whatever reason. So I went down and checked the inventory after I led the Vanguard away. I think maybe looking into the inventory reset it and it began trying to tame again. And eventually the pygmy tamed up, but the Vanguard immediately killed it, so that's nice. And after all this, I still couldn't find Terminator. I didn't see any death messages, so I don't know where he went, but I'm just gonna say he's dead. On day 49, I went out to find another pygmy, and this time I found a penguin pygmy. So I was like, hey, why not, right? So I gave it the treats and waited. While I waited, another vanguard dude spawned, so I ran away. I managed to escape temporarily, and then the pygmy tamed up. I quickly got to the pygmy before the vanguard did. I picked up the penguin and the bag of treats, and then the vanguard killed me. When I got home, I evolved the penguin into a prime penguin. It has minions, so that's cool. It's like three little yeti minions. It does 1500 damage, so not bad. I named him Popper, and then I killed baby Argies for levels. I maxed out his speed and then put the rest into melee. It has this aura thing that kind of kills stuff it's kind of weak but it's kind of interesting i mean like it's all right i mean it's kind of cool i guess on day 50 i wanted another rg pygmy since freedom had died earlier so i went out and found one i tamed the rg pygmy and then i went home it took eight treats to evolve him into an apex pygmy and then I evolved it into a prime pygmy and I got another unique RG. So I don't know if it's a 100% chance of being a unique or what, but two times in a row must be really rare, I'd assume. Since I lost the last saddle with freedom, I made another one and upgraded it to 34.4 armor, which is my highest record so far. I gave him his saddle and I named him Cobalt. To start, he does 2,176 damage, which is really good. I found this out by killing some babies for levels, of course. With the levels I got from killing the babies, I got him to 150,000 health. Then I maxed out his speed and then I put the rest into melee. He does 10,000 damage. I was curious why he did so much more damage in freedom and why his health went up more and i didn't know why but docs had a pretty big update before i started playing day 50 so i'm just going to assume that they did something but i don't really know i waited for him to heal up and then we went out on a hunt this time i'll be careful to watch out for angry flying meatballs
On day 51, I went on that hunt that I was going to go on yesterday, and the first thing I killed was an Apex Prime Penguin, mostly with the help of the minions, but I actually finished it off with my sniper rifle. Later in the day, I was trying to kill a dragon so I could steal the egg, when out of nowhere, a snowball killed me and Cobalt. Like, what? I, I don't know, I was so confused, I, I was just minding my own business, was about to kill this dragon, and then a snowball? Like, really? Dude, I'm done, okay? I, I, sometimes, I can't with this camera, right? No, why? A snowball, really? I, I can't with this mod, dude, it sucks. How are you supposed to advance in this game if you can't get anything? I was sick and tired of how rigged this mod feels sometimes. I just, I couldn't advance without getting a good tame. And in order to get a good tame, you need a good tame. You see how that just doesn't make sense? It appeared to my knowledge that apparently I was playing docs at the hardest difficulty. I didn't really think an overhaul mod could have a difficulty, but apparently it can. Since I was using mainly vanilla dino settings, it was considered the hardest difficulty and I'm not set out for the hardest difficulty okay so i cranked everything to as easy as possible i really don't have to ask hirochi for help again she really doesn't like using a lot of her power she's kind of lazy so i went out to go test how the game had changed and i used frostbite and he was doing nearly 37k per tick with his frost breath so yeah that's that's definitely better now i can actually play the game and not die unnecessarily right? I slaughtered three wyverns to take one egg, and while the egg was incubating, I summoned the pygmy thing I got from the penguin. It was another dotic pygmy, so I didn't bother evolving it. I also made an industrial cooker so I can make some kibble. Then I hatched the wyvern, and apparently I don't have prime kibble, which is weird because I could have sworn I did, but... Anyways, since I don't, I needed to go out and kill some primes. I found the dragon nest that was still being guarded by a dragon, so I killed the dragon and stole the egg that was rightfully mine. Then I killed a Spinosaurus X, and here's the loot that I got from it. Then I killed an Apex Prime Phoenix and got the prime kibble I needed. On day 53, I named the Apex Lightning Wyvern Splix, and then I put him in a soul bowl because I'm honestly going to give the prime kibble to the dragon first. I hatched the dragon and I named her Athena. I imprinted her to 100% and waited for her to grow up. When she was fully grown, I gave her the kibble she wanted and she started off by doing 712 damage. So I killed a bunch of baby Argies for levels. I got her to half a million health and then I got her movement speed to max. Then I put the rest in the melee. Good luck killing me now, game. The thing is, many of you may think this is overpowered or even cheating, but it's really not. For one, it's just the super easy baby mode, which I apparently played the hardest mode for more than 50 days. And two, this isn't even close to OP. This this just makes me almost as strong as wild dinos. They're crazy strong like this, so now it's just fair. She's gonna take forever to heal though. So since she's gonna take forever to heal, I didn't want to wait around forever. So I made a crazy's crazy potions table since the doc's health potions are absurd. I made some healing potions and then I healed Athena. On day 54, I tested out Athena, and she doesn't do as much damage as I thought she would. The first thing I killed was a Prime Apex Pithecus, still a stupid name by the way. I got a Dodo Rex summon, so I wanted to summon it. When I got home, I got a Dodo Rex X, and I named him Tyrant. He still has that goofy run. I killed Baby Argies for levels, then I got Tyrant to half a million health, maxed out his speed, and then put the rest of the levels into melee. Then I used a potion to heal him. I remembered I had armor for a dragon, so I gave it to a Athena. While on Tyrant, I killed a Prime Ferox, and then I got wrecked by this hell of this thing. So even super duper easy baby mode isn't easy. Well, bye Tyrant. You're my second Dota Rex that I've had, and you've also lasted a few minutes as my tame, so maybe that's a sign. I saw a Mega King Kong, and I thought I could kill it. I was wrong. So on day 55, I gave Splix his kibble and killed baby Argies. I got him to 200,000 health, and then I maxed out his speed and then put the rest of the levels into movement speed. Then I healed him up and then tested him out, and he does 18,000 damage per tick. It's not really that big of a number, honestly. Frostbite does more, so I don't really know, honestly. Kind of disappointing. So I went out and tamed another RG Pygmy. Then I evolved it into a prime pygmy, and I didn't get a unique, so I guess I was just lucky when I got it twice in a row. Then I gave him the saddle that Cobalt wore, and I named him Sandwich. I don't know, I was hungry, okay? Then I killed babies with Sandwich. Then I did the usual leveling process, the thing I've said like six times now, I don't know. 
you know the drill, okay? Then I healed him, of course, and he still has minions, so that's not a unique only thing, so that's good. I still don't really know how different a unique is besides maybe being more powerful. I don't know. Sandwich does 38,000 damage, which is pretty nice. And the minions still do the same boring damage of like 4k. I was trying to kill a manticore and I still got one shot, so that's great. I guess I, I, I need a difficulty easier than easy baby mode then, I guess. Dang. On day 56, I tried to read about evolutions, but I ended up breaking my game. It really just broke my game. So I had to exit the main menu and just open the world again. And this time, I actually didn't break the game with the book, but instead, the game crashed. So we're off to a great start, and it crashed. We're off to a great start, guys. But wait, it gets worse because the rest of day 56 and days 57, 58, 59, and 60 weren't recorded because I am an idiot. Well, I'll give you a rundown on what happened. I evolved Splix into a zombie wyvern, then got him killed. <laughs> I killed a prime phoenix with frostbite and got a summoning item for a prime phoenix. I summoned the phoenix and named him Torch. He's pretty powerful, didn't kill him somehow. Then I got frostbite killed. So I hatched the ice dragon egg and named him Frostmall in honor of frostbite. He died. Yeah, that's about it. Other than losing like three tames and not recording for five days like a complete idiot, I did get a lot of loot, but that's nothing compared to the footage I lost. You will not understand how upset I am at myself. All right, day 61, you're gonna wanna sit down for this. None of it was recorded because I'm stupid. Yeah, so um, day 62, I killed the prime Zomdodo, but guess what, I also wasn't recording then, so um, yeah. I'm literally such an idiot. Anyways, I got a green fire apex wyvern on day 61 and I named her Emerald. I used the prime Zomdodo brain that I got from the prime Zomdodo that I killed in the morning of day 62 to evolve Emerald into a zombie wyvern. I hatched the zombie wyvern egg and it was a completely different wyvern, so I named him Excelsior. On the morning of day 63, I was trying to kill a prime death worm, but I just couldn't get it to show itself. So I had to land and get real uncomfortably close and i got killed by the stupid poison thing so i'm literally done but obviously i wasn't because i went out and stole two manticore eggs one was level 915 and the other was a level 1245 i also got a manticore prime enhancement which means now i can use the x attack so that's pretty sweet with every tame that i've gotten killed it's honestly kind of a miracle that torch isn't dead yet but uh, you know I don't want to jinx it, so I'm going to knock on wood now. Then I hatched the manticore, and he is blood red. Literally super cool looking. I cannot get anything that I would prefer to look any cooler, because this thing looks awesome. On day 64, I named the manticore Bloodstone, and I gave him his kibble, and then killed some babies for XP. And honestly, I'm not even going to say I did the usual leveling and healing treatment, because it's always going to be the same unless proven guilty. I mean, otherwise. What'd you say? Bloodstone does 41,000 damage with his bite, and the X attack can do anywhere from like a couple thousand to like 50,000 damage. Never mind, it can go up to 77,000. Then I upgraded the Manticore Enhanced Saddle to 118 Ascendant. Then I killed an Apex Dragon just for the egg to despawn right in front of my face. It did not just despawn in front of my face. I did, however, find another Apex Manticore egg, so that's good. On the morning of day 65, I had a too close of a call with a Prime Dragon. I think I just suffered a stroke. You guys can check that replay. Look how close we got to dying, dude. It's too, that's too much for my old man heart, okay? Hoo wee I need to lay down. Damn! Later, I realized you can get up to a 50% stat increase by sacrificing ahead of the creature's type. In this case, dragon or, or wyvern. Of course, no manticore, though. My wyverns and dragons could have literally been so much more powerful. Later in the day, I killed another apex dragon, and now I have all the stuff I need to evolve bloodstone. Please don't change the color. Please do not change the color of Bloodstone, dude. I will quit unless you change it to that color. On day 66, I hatched the Apex Fire Manticore egg and named him Bloodstone again. But of course, I wasn't recording this because I'm an idiot. Anyways, after the usual leveling, his bite does 38,000 damage. 
Now his X attack are a lot of fireballs, and he now has a fire breath that does 25,000 per tick. Now I need to get the stuff so I can evolve him into a prime fire manticore. The first thing on my list was to kill a prime lava golem. On day 67, I tried the flame breath on the prime lava golem. Yeah, this is not happening. So I went back home to grab some tech weapons to see if they could dent it. I brought out a tech bow and a tech phase pistol. So the tech phase pistol does nothing, and the tech bow does nothing. So the next thing I tested out was a tech rifle V2, and well, it also did nothing. So I tried to go in and just try and kill it. It's literally impossible. How are you supposed to kill something like that? On day 68, I did the Konami cheat code to get the stuff I needed to evolve Bloodstone. I asked the Ark Gods if it was okay, and they said something like, Get off my porch! So, I mean, it sounded like a yes to me. And it worked, so that's pretty awesome. Now to evolve Bloodstone. I successfully evolved him and then hatched the egg. I also changed the difficulty from super duper easy baby mode to baby in the womb could beat this and if that's too hard for me then I suppose I should just quit YouTube or something cause dang I'm bad at this game. His bite does 318,000 damage and his tail fireballs seem to be pretty effective. His flame breath does 163,000 per tick so I mean it seems kinda weak right? Day 69 Nice. I killed a prime shadow main and it dropped a bunch of boxes and apparently an R giga thing. I mean, it scared me a little bit. Anyways, I killed the giga and as I was looting the boxes, I was attacked by these android people things. At the end of the day, I had an intense fight with Rodan. On day 70, I sniped a Mega Uranio with Bloodstone, and then I killed a Hell Ovis and had a horrifying voice line play. I don't know where it came from, I don't know if it came from the Hell Ovis or the Titan Manticore, but it was... It caught me off guard, okay? The Ovis dropped the Giga X egg that I needed since I had the Rodan heart and the R Giga X head in my inventory. Before I hatched the Giga, I wanted to summon the two tames I got summoning items for. First one was a Prime Shadow Mane from the Shadow Mane we killed. I named her Isabella. And the second one was an Ancient Prime Scorpion, and I named him Rad Scorp. Then I hatched the R Giga X thing, and I named him Mold. He does 3 million damage. Rocks don't even stop him in his path. Isabella's pretty cool too. She washes, I mean, she's pretty fast. Brad Scorp has minions that have their own minions. Like, that's insane. I spent most of day 71 trying to tame this stupid Ferox until this prime scorpion came out of nowhere and killed me. So that was a fun waste of my day. On day 72, I killed a mega dragon, and when it died, an uber monkey thing spawned. I panicked, so I killed it too. I didn't know if I was supposed to knock it out or something, but I guess I wasn't, so I guess it's a good thing I killed it. Here is the loot that I got. Later in the day, I summoned a prime wyvern. He was a bright orange, red, unique prime wyvern. I named him Bloodthorn. His bite does 500,000 damage and his flame breath does 400,000 damage per tick. Then I sacrificed a prime wyvern head and made him about 50% more powerful. His bite now does 563,000 damage and his breath does 451,000 damage per tick. On day 73, I summoned two X-Rexes. One was unique and the other one wasn't. And ironically, the unique one, the supposedly stronger one, actually had lower health, but the other stats, like melee, were higher. So I think you know which one we're keeping. I named her Hell Queen because her eyes looked evil. She does 818,000 damage, she can grab stuff with her mouth, and she can go invincible. When you press X, she can't do or take any damage, so that's actually kind of useful. It'd be cool as if when her health were to get low, if it were to automatically do that so you can heal her or escape. On day 74, I summoned a Gigantopithecus pygmy and then I evolved it all the way to a Prime King Kong. Well, technically it was already an Apex, so all I had to do was evolve it once. His punch is around half a million, but his big giant turd is around 3 million damage. On day 75, I summoned an Ancient Prime Argy. 
I guess. I don't know. I'm not super happy about it. I was using the transmute thing. I didn't know what I was doing, and that's what I got. So I went out to kill another Rodan. And then I went back to the transmute station area thing, and I transmuted the Rodan heart for a Rodan pygmy. Now I needed to go and find another Rodan so I can actually knock it out and kind of tame it, but it doesn't tame. It kind of like burns up into an A. It's kind of weird, but basically I need to go find another Rodan and knock it out. Later in the day, I killed a Mega T-Rex and then an Uber King Kong spawn and killed me and my pygmy Rodan. So now instead of going out to find another Rodan to knock out, I have to find another another Rodan to kill, and then another Rodan to knock out. Yay. So since I was killed off of a mold, I had to go back on Harambe, and I had a little bit of a scare. No, you did not. Oh, he's still alive. We're good. Oh, he's he's unconscious though. Then I killed the Uber King Kong, and then I sniped a Mega Urania with a giant turd from Harambe. <laughs> On day 76, I summoned an ancient prime monkey. I believe I got the drop after killing the Uber King Kong, but anyways, I named him Sylvester. His fists do about 500,000 damage, and when he throws his big rock, it does around 3 million. He can summon Yeti minions and an Apex Prime Dire Bear. Then I killed a giant Dimorph with a giant rock. At the end of the day, I killed three prime Apex Pithecus, still a dumb name by the way. And his name is John C. <laughs> And here's the loot that I got. On day 77, I summoned a Prime Leech. It can summon these Leech minions and it's kind of weak, so I don't know. I didn't like it, so I didn't bother giving it a name. Later, I went back to the Transmute Shrine to get more Ancient Primes. I got an Ancient Prime Dimorphodon and an Ancient Prime Hell Horse. I summoned the Hell Horse and I named it Rapidash. Its headbutt bite thing attack does 1.1 million damage, which is pretty good. Its kick does 472,000 damage. And it also shoots out this big death skull looking thing that does some pretty insane damage. On day 78, I summoned the ancient prime Dimorphodon. I named him Destroyer. His bite does 650,000 damage and he also has a really inaccurate fireball. He also summons a prime bee that summons more bees. I don't know, it's kind of weird. I killed a Megapithecus and I got the saddle I needed to unlock Sylvester's X attack. His X attack is like a rock explosion, but it also summons a prime apex fire wyvern, which is pretty odd. Later in the day, I killed a mega dragon. Then I killed a mega electric ill thing that is usually flying, but for some reason was on the ground. I got into a fight with a mega T-Rex that really should have died, but of course the game still doesn't doesn't like me, so it had like one hit left until it would have died, but of course none of my hits would connect. And I also couldn't see anything because I was blinded by the fire it put on me. And then to rub salt in the wound, it knocked me off Sylvester, getting me killed. And even worse, it killed Sylvester. Literally so stupid. Are you kidding me? He had 5 million health. So I came back on mold, I killed the Mega Rex, and the Mega Rex spawned an Uber King Kong, just like the other one. And you guessed it, it killed me off of mold. So I came back with Rapidash. Mold and the Uber were chill, which is kind of weird, like they were best buds. So I soul balled mold, and then I killed the Uber monkey and all his minions. Here's all the loot that I got. On day 79, I summoned an ancient prime dragon, and it turned out to be another in unique, so I don't know if it's weaker or stronger than an ancient, but I named him Blazitron. His breath does 403,000 damage per tick, and his bite does 605 damage. His X attack does whatever that is. On day 80, I summoned an ancient prime dire bear, and I named him Teddy. He's kinda weak. Like, he can summon a Prime Dire Bear and a big Vanguard Bear, but I don't know, he's kind of weak. I remembered to sacrifice a Dragon Head to Blazitron, so now he is more powerful. Later in the day, I killed a Mega Manticore. The Manticore dropped the summoning item for an ancient Prime Poison Rock Golem, so I summoned it. I named him Moss, and his punch attack whatever does nearly 17 million damage and when he throws his poison rock ball thing it does 75 million damage his x attack does 43 million damage three times i'd assume i don't know it went three times but the thing i attacked died in the first so i don't know i'd hope it does it three times and it also summons a prime dodic i don't know he seems kind of weak not gonna lie on day 81 i found a mega fire wyvern so i killed it after it died a mega zombie wyvern spawned so i killed it as well 
It dropped a mega zombie wyvern head that can apparently transform an ancient wyvern into a wyvern X, whatever that is. Later in the day, I killed another Rodan, and I took the heart and transmuted it into a Rodan pygmy. None of this was recorded because idiot here forgot to hit record again. On day 82, I transmuted an ancient prime wyvern, and then I summoned the ancient prime wyvern, and then I evolved it into a wyvern X, and then I summoned the wyvern X, and this part wasn't recorded either. But the wyvern I did get, I named him Hellspawn. This is the Wyvern X. His right click attack is whatever this is, and it is insane. His C attack is just as insane. It's like a plasma ball with a plasma explosion. It's honestly pretty cool. On day 83, I went out to knock out a Rodan with my Fat Man, and I ended up killing myself. When I came back, I found that Rodan had actually been successfully knocked out. So I landed on his floating body and tried to find his inventory. When I did, I placed the Prime Dragonheart in it. The Prime Dragonheart was the item that the book said I needed in order for Rodan to burst into flames and give me the egg I needed to get my very own Rodan, but nothing was happening. Maybe it's because my Rodan pygmy died, so... I'm gonna have to go get another one. So I killed another Rodan, and it dropped a lot of goodies. A lot of stuff I probably won't end up using. On day 84, I summoned another Rodan Pygmy. And turns out, the reason that the Rodan wasn't bursting into flames and giving me the egg was because I didn't have the Rodan Pygmy. So the answer to my question earlier is that yes, I do need a Rodan Pygmy, because when I got back to Rodan, he immediately started to burn up. I picked up his egg and then hatched it. I named the baby Rodan Prodan, cause I, I don't know actually, it's kind of a stupid name. Prodan is absolutely massive. His bite does an underwhelming amount of 3 million damage, and he has a roar that can slow down his prey, and then a roll explosion thing that does some pretty insane damage. On day 85, I summoned a prime lava golem, and I named him Lava Lamp. His punch does around 30 million damage, and when he throws his fire rock thing, it does 42 million damage. So not as strong as Moss, but definitely a good backup. I summoned a titan using the transmute shrine, and I waited a little bit while on Moss just to be, you know, safe, and then I looked into the sky, and it was a titan dragon. Okay, well, that was anticlimactic. Anyways, the dude kinda ran off, so I had to chase him down with Prodan. I killed it, easily, and got a bunch of stuff. At the end of the day, I put on a full set of Manticore armor. With the full set now being equipped, I get the Manticore X buff, or whatever the buff is called, I don't know. I th Maybe it's Manticore X? I don't know, it sounds cool if it was Manticore X, but it's probably not. On day 86, I summoned a Primal Rock Golem, and it turns out he's pretty weak, so I didn't even bother giving him a name. Later in the day, I was using the Transmute Shrine to get another Ancient Dino, but I got three Ancient Scorpions in a row. I literally don't want another Ancient Scorpion, so I summoned a Titan instead, and it turns out it was a Titan Turkey, so I killed it, and when it died, it spawned a Mega Dragon, so I killed that as well. On day 87, I summoned a Jerboa Pygmy, and then I evolved it. Now I can use Prime Trophy things like their heads or their arms or whatever to turn them directly into Prime Relics, I think. On day 88, I tamed a Prime Compi because I wanted to try to get a Mega Rex because it says it's a Titan Killer, so I thought it'd be super powerful. So I sacrificed Primes to get tokens. By the morning of day 89, I had gotten all of the tokens, so I gave them all to the Prime Compi, and it started this bubble thing, as if I were going into a boss fight. So I equipped Moss just in case we were going into a boss fight, and when the bubble thing closed, we didn't go into a boss fight, but instead this statue of a Rex thing replaced the Prime Compi. Inside the little statue of a Rex was the summon to a Mega Rex, and when I took it, the structure broke, and it made this satisfying glass breaking sound. On day 90, I summoned the Mega Rex. Turns out it's a unique, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing with the Mega Rex. I named him Bloodline, and he only does around 2 million damage, and he can summon some Apex Yetis and does the same roar thing that Hell Queen could do, but overall, kind of disappointing. I spent days 91 through 99 going out and killing titans, because I needed all four of the crystals so I could actually summon the titan overlord. So enjoy this sick montage I made, at least I hope it's sick because I'm recording this before I make the montage. You better make it sick future Rex, right okay? Okay well anyways enjoy it. I said enjoy it.
Alright, it is day 100 and we are going to do the boss fight with the, the king guardian thing, whatever it's called. The titan thing? Yeah, that thing. Anyways, after about 8 days or so of grinding, I finally got all 4 of the crystals I need. But before we get into the boss fight, go ahead and use the 5 seconds it would take to go ahead and subscribe and like the video. Thank you. Alright, let's get straight into it. All right, we're gonna transmute the Titan Overlord. Okay, I guess we're gonna be fighting him. It's gonna be pretty epic. He has 34 million health. Okay, that's not too intense. So I've got Ro well Prodan, I guess, out because I well it's a flying thing and I don't really have any other flyers. So I assume that this would probably do it. So I'm just gonna power up Prodan because apparently it gets like 10% damage increase too. And we're gonna go in and do our spinny thing. See how much damage that does. Oh, that's pretty good. He doesn't do that much damage back, probably. If we lose Prodan, that's I'm gonna be eating my words. I'm gonna not use the healer things because I feel like that is a little bit cheaty. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Apparently, it sends these bats while they got monkeys on them. That's weird. Okay, this is intense. Okay, this is super intense. <laughs> okay, you guys can like stop now. Thank you. Alright, sweet. Looks like there's a Reaper King down there. I can't tell. Okay, let's get back in there. Let's do the finishing blow or something. Uh oh. Prodan's gonna die, probably. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So it is fine. We do have another flying creature. We've got Blazatron here and I don't really have any other flyers. So we're going to go ahead and try to go in. I honestly thought that the Titan Overlord would actually have some sort of debuff where I would be doing less damage, you know, but it does not. So I'm just going to try to go in, sneak up behind it or something. Uh, if we lose Blazatron, it's whatever. I'll just take out uh, Moss. But no. So it's not doing that bad. I th actually think uh, Blazatron might actually be able to do this. If I can play this correctly. Oh, no, we got it. Oh, that's easy. Easy. Okay, so what did we even get, though? Oh, cool. We got a that thing. That's awesome. Thank you for playing Dino Overhaul X. It was not my pleasure. Okay, so now that we have the power of Titan, I'm going to put that on my belt. Uh, is right there. Why not? Yeah. So now we get an additional 20% defense and an additional 100% damage increase. So that makes me curious. We don't care about Blazertron. He's not really that strong. What we want to see, what the what the fellas want to see, is how much you're going to do now. I'm going to wait for the buff to come up. Okay, now it's up. Ready? How much damage are you going to do to this Bronto? Oh, 115 million. That's not that bad. That's kind of weak. But before you do go, I apparently have four more crystals. I honestly didn't think, apparently had two of these crystals. I, they honestly look way too similar. So when I got apparently my second one of these, I thought it was my first. So I have another four set of these. So I'm going to summon him again. So with him being summoned, I'm going to use Moss this time. No fly, you fly. So yeah, he's up there or whatever. So we're just going to launch a green ball, see what happens. We're just going to launch a green ball, see what happens. See how many times it takes. Oh, that wasn't that bad. It was pretty easy. Yeah. Well, guys, I beat Dino Overhaul X on Super Duper Ultra Baby uh, Easy Baby in the Womb could beat it type game. So that's a lot of fun. Um, I at least spent most of the days on apparently the hardest difficulty, which is like recommended for six players. So that's, that's cool. Um, anyways, if you did enjoy this, definitely go ahead and make sure to subscribe, uh, cause like 90% of you guys aren't, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.